Welcome back to a new video. In this video, we are going to do a full data science project. We are going to start with data analysis. We will do feature engineering. We are going to train machine learning models. And we are going to create a fast API app with a prediction endpoint. The data set is going to be about the fuel consumption. And I'm going to add the data sets link in the description of this video. Let's start coding. Here is our data card. We are going to use this data set in our project. I'm going to leave this link in the description of this video. You can easily download from there. You just need to come to here and download the file there. Okay, let's read about the dataset. The vehicle attributes and emissions dataset contains comprehensive information on various vehicles manufactured in the year 2000. It includes details such as make, model, vehicle class, engine size, cylinder count, transmission type, and fuel type. Additionally, the dataset provides range for fuel consumption and carbon dioxide emissions, offering insights into the environmental impact of each vehicle. Okay, so I'm not going to read all of that. And here is our columns like this. And we are also going to explore our data set in the code editor too. So I'm just going to get to the code editor and we can directly start. Don't forget to download this file and put in a place with your Python document. Great. So yeah, I'm in the VS code right now. You can use either Google Colab, Spider, any code editor you want, PyCharm, I'm going to prefer VS Code. I'm going to open a new file named like notebook.ipmb. It's going to be a Jupyter Notebook. Then I'm going to select kernel like Python environments. Okay, I'm going to start by importing pandas, importing numpy, and I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot.splt. Then as the next step, we can do like pandas read csv and i'm going to put my data file in this destination right now so it's in here right now i'm just going to rename it quickly it create the copy like this and i'm going to just copy this name and put it in here and i'm going to make it run and here is our data set great we are going to save this to something like data and we will make it run great so we can just do data.head for seeing the data sites first five rows also we can specify the number like we can say tree for seeing the first tree we can say tail tree for seeing the last tree even we can say 30 and increase this number by default it's five and i'm going to look for the first five so we have integer in year accura etc values in make we can just check how many different makes in that column like data make dot unique it's going to give us the unique values and if we say number of unique we will see the count of that 36 different values in the make okay we have the models with string data type we can also do the same for the model like this 228 different vehicle class string and we have floats at the engine size cylinders we have integers transmission let's see how much different values we have like this and we have eight we have the fuel fuel consumption and co-emissions okay so we have like integer float string string great so let's just explore our data set i will say data dot shape for getting the row count 639 and column count 10 also i'm going to say data.info and it's going to give me the general information about the data set the range index the data types and memory usage things like that and i'm going to say data.describe for getting a numerical summary for the integer of float columns like the average fuel consumption is 14.71 Minimum is 4.9 and maximum is 30.2. Okay, so let's start by dropping the columns that we are not going to use in our analysis. I will just call the data and I will say, actually let me call the data.columns at the upper side. I will say data.drop and I'm going to drop year. I'm going to say columns and I'm going to give it a list like year and I'm going to actually i think we can use this too and i'm going to drop the co-emissions carbon dioxide emissions like this and i think 
it's enough for now but when i make it run it's going to give me a new data frame without the columns but i need to set this so i will say in place equals to true but before running this cell i will just call the data and you will see we will still have the columns that we don't want like you can see carbon dioxide mxo and year so when i make this run with in place equals to true it's going to modify the original data frame and we are not going to have that columns anymore great so let's see the unique values for the engine size so i will say data engine size dot unique and we will see we have this much engine size values we can just create a histogram for seeing the distribution like plt histogram we will give data engine size and let's just make it run like that also we can just say plt.show and it's going to make this text disappear and we can give it a x label like engine size and we can give it a label like frequency and we can just give it a title like engine size histogram also i need to add the y in here so great we have this histogram right now oh it's interesting we have the low values mostly so we can just call data engine size that describe and see the numerical summary the mean is 3.26 around here and standard deviation is 1.23 okay great i want to see the correlation so i will call the data and i will say i'm going to filter the columns like engine size and cylinders and i'm going to take the fuel consumption actually like this okay and i'm going to say that correlation like this and we can see that actually i only want this fuel consumption values so i will say fuel consumption and i'm going to make it run so great we have engine size cylinders and fuel consumptions they are all related as it can be expected like we have such high correlations correlation coefficient takes values between minus one and one minus one means that strong negative relationship which means that one when one moves up the other one moves down but in here we have positive correlations which are closer to one which means that strong positive relationship which means that when the engine size increases or cylinders increases fuel consumption increases as it can be expected so let's clean our data a little bit like i will call data and i will say is an a and when i make it run it's going to give me booleans for each cell i'm going to say sum for seeing the column wise situation we don't have any na values okay let's see for the duplicated ones like we are just going to say sum again in here and we have one duplicated value we don't need to drop that one is a really low value but i'm just going to show you like i will say data drop duplicates and i'm going to save it with in place accused to true great so so i'm going to call the data again and i don't want them to be all capital letter like i'm just going to go to the modeling side right now but I just want to fix that so i will call the data.columns and i just want to keep the letters at the first letter so what i can do i'm just going to create a string like let's say string one is going to be like a b c d and what you can do with strings is you can just call string one and you can say capitalize like this and you will get the thing that you want so how we are going to do this on that i'm going to say for index in data.columns and i will say index.capitalize and i'm going to print that so you will see that we are going to get the result that we want like this and in here what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a list with new column names and it's going to be an empty list for now then i'm going to say for index in data.columns new column names that append and i will give the index in here so when i make it run and call the new column names actually not the index so i'm just going to say capitalize i missed that part and i will just make it run again and here is our list with the new column names and i'm going to set the data column names 
like new column names. And whenever I call the data again, you are going to see we will have the new column names. Great. So I am just going to create a basic model right now. So let we can start the modeling side. I'm going to import train test lid at the first place, like from scikit-learn that model selection import train test split and before doing the train test split I will call the data.columns and I'm going to pick my X like they are going to be engine size and cylinders so I will say data engine size and cylinders like that and for the Y side I'm going to select data fuel consumption so we can just call our X and we can call our Y great we have the values that we want okay so I'm going to do the train test split what does train test split means is we are going to separate our data like training and testing set and we are going to train our model based on the training data so we can test its performance with the test data so we will say x train x test y train and y test is going to be train test split and i will say x y and test size is going to be 0.2 which means that 20 percent of the data is going to be in the test set and 80 percent is going to be in the training set also we can think like we have 10 amount of data 8 is going to be on the training set, 2 is going to be in the testing set. Great. So I'm just going to train a linear regression model. I will say from scikit-learn.linear model import linear regression and then I'm going to initialize it like LR is going to be linear regression. Then I'm going to make it run. I'm going to train my model using linear regression.fit and I will say x train and y train so after training my model i will say linear regression that coefficient so i'm going to have my coefficients so we have our equation right now so our model is something like this multiplied by x1 we can just say it like that x1 plus this multiplied with x2 accused target so in other terms I'm just going to make it copy and I will say engine size and in here I'm going to say let me remember that cylinders accused fuel consumption here is our equation so how we are going to know if this model is good or not I'm just going to call the linear regression dot predict and I will give the X test the unseen data and we have the predictions and I'm going to say predictions equals to this so with this predictions we are going to observe the differences with the Y test so I'm going to call the predictions for you to see we have values like this and I'm going to just make an import like from scikit-learn that matrix import mean absolute error and I will say mean absolute error y test and predictions and it's 1.29 so let's call the statistics for the data fuel consumption that describe we are going to decide if this value is good or not i think it's a good value since we have the mean of 14 and we have the standard deviation is 3.3 so i'm going to use that in my fast api app it's okay so we are just going to export this model right now okay so we have this linear regression model ready what i'm going to do is i'm going to import joblib and i'm going to export my model as pico file using joblib.dump and i will say linear regression and i will say near model dot pickle great so we are going to have that linear model dot pickle in here okay so i'm going to create a python script right now with the name app.py and i'm just going to write my face api code in here from now on okay i'm going to save my notebook and i have my model in here great so 
I'm going to start by saying from fast API import fast API and then I will say from Pydentech import base model and it's for defining the data structures and I will say import joblib for sure in here I will say class input data and we will say base model we will say input 1 is going to be float and input 2 is going to be float then we are going to define the model like model is going to be let me take the name from here linear model pickle is going to be joblib dot load and we will say this in here and after that what we are going to do is we will say app is going to be fast api we are going to initialize it like this and then i'm going to say app dot post and we will create a predict endpoint and it's going to be define predict and we will say data is going to be input data and we will say input values are going to be data dot input one and data dot input two and then we will say prediction is going to be model dot predict we will give the input values to the model and then we will say zero for taking the exact value so then at the last step i'm going to say return we are going to return the prediction like this and it's ready great so it's this easy let's test it out so i'm going to save my file in here and then i'm going to say ubicorn app app and i will say reload like this and i'm going to go to this address from my browser and start to recording again from that browser so here we are in here i'm going to click this and then i will say documents so i need one this sign in here so it's going to work out smoothly right now great we have this predict in here right now i'm just going to press to it and we can see that it says request body required input one and input two let's try it out so i will click to try it out in here and then i'm going to give values like 1.2 and i'm going to give value like 4 for the this is engine size and this is the cylinder and i will say execute and let's see what's going to be our response it's 200 which means that our request is successful and with this values 1.2 and 4 we get the prediction 10.38 so let's just change the values and test it out again i'm going to say 1.8 and 5 this time and i will say execute so our prediction is here right now 11 so i'm going to jump back into the code editor and summarize the code and then i'm going to finish the video that was all for the api development side so what we did in here is we imported fast api we imported base model and we imported joblib then we defined the base model class with the input data types float float then we loaded our model using joblib then we created the fast api app then we define the predict endpoint and we give the input values like that we get the prediction and we return the prediction back so that was all for the coding part of this video thanks for watching let's get to the outro thanks for watching the video i'm sharing two or three new videos every week about data science and python programming you can subscribe to my channel for more videos like this i have a playlist named data science projects where i have more than 20 data science projects with their data sets on that playlist you can just reach to it from the cards of this video or the link in the description see you in the next tutorial have a great day